In the UK today, we use 350 billion kilowatt hours of electricity every year to keep homes, biz and factories working. We generate this electricity from various sources, mostly fossil fuels like coal and gas, but also from nuclear power stations and renewable energy sources. The most significant renewable energy comes from wind turbines. In 2006, it was 1% of all the electricity we used. The government wants this to increase to 20% due to concerns about the effects of carbon dioxide pollution and the fears that our fossil fuels are running out. The UK, quite simply, is one of the windiest countries in Europe. We have a wind resource here that theoretically could power this country eight times over. Wind energy is the fastest growing energy source worldwide and here in the UK over the last two years we have actually doubled the amount of wind power capacity we've installed. Onshore wind is a technology that works now. For wind to provide 20% electricity we'll need around 10,000 wind turbines. The same amount of energy could be generated by 12 fossil fuel power stations or six nuclear power stations. We have around 2,000 operational wind turbines scattered across the UK in wind farms. This is Blacklaw Wind Farm between Glasgow and Edinburgh in Scotland. It produces 124 megawatts of electricity, enough for around 70,000 homes. This electricity is extracted by using kinetic energy from the moving mass of air. The air blows on the wind turbine blades, which pushes them round, subsequently turning the generator and making electricity. Unfortunately, you can usually only transfer 30% of the possible energy from the air into electricity. You generally get 60% from a coal or gas power station. No electricity source gives you 100%. As far as we're concerned, the fuel is free and efficiency doesn't really come into it if we don't harness the energy of the wind the first time around it will always be there to do so later and in fact wind turbine technology is remarkably good at extracting the energy that is in the wind and converting it into electricity wind turbines in the UK right now do actually save four million tons of carbon dioxide emission per year however we must bear in mind no technology is 100 percent efficient saving carbon dioxide comes at a financial cost Wind is certainly an important part of the attack on climate change. It's one of the cheapest forms of renewables, uh, but still it's, it's quite an expensive way to save carbon dioxide. For instance, it costs over 100 pounds a ton of CO2, and since the costs of wind tend to increase the more wind is installed because you have to use less efficient sites, and since there are the practical problems about integrating it into the rest of the system, it can always only be one part of the solution, not a total solution. It's the national grid that manages the movement of electricity from a wind farm or other electricity source to where it's needed. One unique characteristic of wind-generated electricity is its variability. One day it's windy, another day it isn't, so the amount of electricity produced varies. When the wind speed at Blacklaw is 5 metres per second, each turbine gives 230 kilowatts of power. But when it doubles to 10 metres per second, they each produce 1,800 kilowatts of power, eight times as much. This variability is managed by the national grid. One of the biggest challenges for us is the fact that you can't store electricity in the quantities that we need as a nation and therefore you always have to make sure that exactly the right amount of electricity is generated to meet the nation's demand for every minute, every second of every day. This balancing act requires skill and experience. During a large national sporting event, say the World Cup, come half time or the end of the programme, suddenly everyone will get up, they'll turn the lights on, they'll put the kettle on and the demand will rise very suddenly. We put an awful lot of effort into forecasting exactly by how much it will for these sorts of events so it matches exactly what the demand is going to do. 
and obviously as more wind generation connects to the transmission system, it's very likely there will be more volatility. It's not just up to the national grid to solve any difficulties as more and more wind power is generated. It's also a potential problem for the energy companies that generate and supply electricity. General error to error, we have a fair idea of how much electricity we're going to generate from each and every one of our wind farms. And we can predict that, put it into the grid, and we can vary the output coming from our other stations and most easily our coal-fired power stations so that for every unit of electricity we're generating from wind, we're generating one less unit from coal. But there is this issue of as we get towards, say, about 20% of all the capacity on the grid coming from renewables, and most particularly wind, we would start to see a different sort of management issue. And that's probably at the moment with current technology a sensible limit to be going for with a single technology like wind. There's two aspects of the problem. One is the simple variability. The other is the unpredictability, which means that these other power sources might have to be brought into effect at short notice. These sources need to be flexible. That usually means the use of fossil-fired power stations operating at below capacity. That is effectively getting fuel. The cost, variability and unpredictability of wind has an impact on any decision about how much, if at all, we should rely upon wind farms. <laughs>